Thank you. Thank you. Thanks so much. Thank Welcome. You. That's your audience. Hi. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It's a real pleasure for me to be here today. But before we talk, I would like to first show you a short clip of the video and then I will start talk about the journey of my life and how I became as a technologist and why I'm working for um, empowering the women through technology. girl in Afghanistan. I was expected to be quiet, to be satisfied with my lot. We are not giving a chance to imagine an alternative. We were trapped until we discovered the internet. That's why I teach girls about digital literacy. I want to make sure that all the women have a voice in our global conversation. You, you first used one in an internet cafe in Herat, right? Yes. Yeah. I hear that there is a box and it was only for the men at that time and it's called computer. And from that moment, I realized that there are more than out than what was around of me. And I make determined to somehow to make the technology the center of my career. Roya Maboub is one of those who's realized her vision. Her name is Roya Maboub. Roya Maboub. She's a tech entrepreneur and a CEO, which is no small feat for an Afghani woman. I started working as IT coordinator at Harvard University, and in 2010, with my younger sister, Elaha, we started a company called Afghan Citadel Software. And uh, we started to hiring a lot of the women as bloggers and uh, uh, programmers. And at that time, I became as the first tech female CEO in Afghanistan. I got a lot of death threats and uh, harassment by local Taliban in Herat. So that's made me go to the Kabul. But in Kabul, they started to harass me more. This was the reason that it made me to leave the country in uh, early 2014. So, where did you go? I, I came to um, New York City. Um, after a lot of the challenges that we faced, um, I still know that there are millions of the girls who are out there just like me. They are curious. They wanted to know more but they don't know what is truly possible for them. And I started the Digital uh, Fund to um, giving these girls and women an opportunity to dream further. I wanted to tell you a story of one of our students. She started to take one of our computer classes in secret, and she find a way that she can support her family. She also took the money and gave to her father. And he saw what she was accomplished on her own. Her daughter has the capital of this. Through technology, we are reshaping how entire communities view a woman, giving everyone a chance to build, to have a better life. The change is radical, but idea isn't. First of all, I would like to thank you, Jose and the kids, for making this happen and bringing my team and myself here to today to speak about the journey of our life and as well that why technology and STEAM is very important for women in developing countries. I grew up in, in my childhood. I grew up in a small city called Nimruz in Afghanistan. Across of the street from the house that I was grew up, there was an empty plot of the land. One day, on that empty plot of the land. Taliban collected all the books and TV sets and set them on the fire. Only Islamic books and a few other uh, subjects were allowed. The message was clear. Only our ideas matter. Only we matter. The Taliban rules. From my window, I saw the ideas, dreams, and freedom applause. From the strict to the match, those books, the television, my only window to the outside world, trend to dash. First fire, then darkness. My heart was broke, and then I became angry. But at that day, I learned some things that become the Catholics for the rest of my life. 
Anger is a gift, a gift of fire, a gift when it burns brightly enough, it can change the world. And for me, it's led me to discover the fire of inside of me that no one can put out, the fire of my imagination. It took me a while to climb the fire inside of me, but after a few times, I glimpsed a couple of times of the dream. Afghanistan had no great TV show program at that time. But with the help of VCR, we could watch our Bollywood and cartoons on VHS tips. It was the only escape to the world that was much prettier than the world under the Taliban rule. It opened our minds to the outsider world. But with the TV sits on the fire and books turned to the ash, we didn't have much to do. We confined to our houses. The only interaction was happening on the house that was separated with the big walls, and we could only talk with our females or our close relatives at the house. During the Taliban, the women are not allowed to go outside, whether the male guardians. It wasn't jail, but it was feel like a jail. The Taliban loves the darkness. Lo darkness was the aim. Keeping the children ignorant was the aim. No access to the outside world was the plan. No critical thinking was the goal. What stood for the truth was the word that came from father, from Allah, and from the teacher. All by conservative, by nature conservative. Abiding a culture to keep all of us in darkness. Yes, boys keeps in the darkness too, but it was much worse for the women. Taliban take over Afghanistan, we had participated to destroy all the school for the girls. What it was remained was a nightmare. Most of the girls were washed to marry at a young age. Soon after, they realized that, that they are struggling to survive a very different, difficult, and dark life. Because of all this devastation in my young life, I began to imagine one day in the future I would have something that's smaller than TV to watch my cartoons. I imagined that I would have some magical books that when I can read them, they could be disappear, and no Taleb could find them to destroy them. Many years later, I found out that the tablets and cell phones and many other devices make my dream to become true. My journey to understand technology started through my own imagination. I grew up in Iran as an Afghan refugee. I knew what a color TV was. And I started having education at an early age. After we returned, this time we back to Herat. And then all these things happened. And I found for me it was difficult to accept one way of dreaming to, to become nothing but someone's wife. Everything has changed in 2003. An internet cafe opened up in Herat that only my brothers and my cousin would go there. A good girl wouldn't walk in. I was told that in that internet cafe, there was a magical box or machine box that connect you to the world. And I was a shy person that always dreamed to be confident. But I think that the first time that I was demonstrated my confidence was that to insist to, insisted to go to this internet cafe to see these things that people called internet. I refused to give up my dream, and one day I was be able to walk in in early morning. And there I saw the internet. The invention that I was heard and imagined appeared. That day my love was changed and I make it determined to make somehow technology the center of my career. Technology was how I know my world could be changed, but soul education was the key that opened the door of, for opportunities and success. Education built the foundation for women like me to get the strengths in their own abilities. This strength encouraged us to believe that we can do whatever we want. 
and to have a life, a pro productive, successful, and peaceful life. This core knowledge makes us to be more independent and less vulnerable. Through the support of my family, I could go to the university, and then I selected to go to the computer science. After graduation, I started to work at a university as an IT coordinator. And after a while, I started my own software development company in 2010. I could hire a lot of the women as a blogger and programmers. And I became the first tech female CEO in Afghanistan. Like many other women in the business, I had less access to commercialized finance or loan than men in the same profession. 81% of the women in Afghanistan, they do not have access to such resources to run their business. Additionally, in Afghanistan, there was a high corruption in the government and private sectors. Security, technical skills, labor, and infrastructure are other problems. The political corruption brought discrimination, spies, and threats to my business and my personal life. Cultural barriers, which limited the free movement in the conservative women's daily life, bleeds into their professional lives as well. But through the technology, I believe that we can overcome all of these uh, challenges. In my journey to overcome these challenges, I realized that the social media can give women in conservative countries a digital voice. Digitalization can connect them with the other part of the world and change their world, allowing them to live beyond the border they have always known. The physical border of a country can no longer limit the potential of a woman with digital access and education. And I believe that every woman can become a digital citizen of the global information society. I believe deep within all of us is desire to make a difference, the desire to do more, to become something greater, to take part of our changing the world. Many across of the world have access to the education, training, and opportunities that allow them to learn and explore their minds and creative genius. Boys and girls all around the world grasping these opportunities that they can invent, design, and create the things that they can change their lives. Break through the science and technology, and any other industry can start with the dream of a child who wanted to do something great and make a difference. This desire makes me to offer the girls in Afghanistan access to technology. It leads me to start a digital citizen fund, a nonprofit organization that gives girls in European countries, a world access to the technology. This is a start with one dream and one goal. With the goal that to see technology is an accessible option for everyone. And with the dream that everyone, even those who are living in conservative countries, they have the opportunity to have access to education, regardless of their gender and social status. It may seem like a big idea, but if we do not have a courage to dream something's different, nothing will be ever changed. When we can imagine a different future for women and children around the world, then we will have the power to do what is necessary to affect those changes. For nearly all of my life, I always imagined a better life for the girls. A year ago, I was asked to facilitate an Afghan robotic team to come to the Washington, D.C. to participate in that first global challenge in an international robotic contest for Tunisia. I thought, why not to make all this a girl team? It would be difficult to send a message to the world and to every young woman in Afghanistan. So I put an exam, and I took an exam from 150 students and 20 selected but many of them didn't have their family's permission, or if they had a family's permission, some of them, they asked me, what is a robot? You can realize that my choice getting seriously limited. We ended up with six girls who had both family's permission and they had also a knowledge of robotic. But none of them had a visa to come to the United States. They were rejected twice. But we persisted, and we didn't want to be quiet. Our voice will not be lost like thousands of other women like us in the past centuries. With the help of the media, we could reach our stories to the people around the world. 
with each to the Congress. We could get the attention of 53 congressmen to sign a petition for us. And then we also get the attention of the White House. At the last minute, President Trump gave the visa to the girls. And we arrived in the United States at the last minute and compete with all other countries and all nations. These girls were the symbol of reliance and persistence, like thousands of them. They entered into the official congressman record, making their journey to compete at the first challenge part of American history. They not only won a silver medal for their courage achievement, but also they won the millions of the people's heart. This was a victory, a vision of the hope for a country that for centuries ignores the um, women's ability in science and other industries. Women in Afghanistan faced with many challenges and problems. This young woman brought the hope, happiness, and unity, and sense of pride for all Afghans. Yet again, women are proving that they have the power to make the tremendous impact on the society if only giving them an opportunity. Today, President Ghani, Chief Executive Dr. Abdullah, former President Karzai, and many other uh, parliament representatives and many influential leaders in Afghanistan meet these girls and they say that they are proud of them. We are trying to build the first school of science, technology, engineering, mass, and innovation in Afghanistan. And we're trying to get the support from the President Ghani. Mission accomplished, a message sent. Hopefully, this also received by all girls and women who are still confined by the Taliban. Imagination is powerful, dream big. The robotic team was the first step in the journey of the equality. Now is the time for the Afghan leaders to lay aside of misconception of the past and embrace the potential of the Afghanistan youth's ability in development and technology. In modern country, all of above maybe wouldn't mean that much. But for the women and girls in Afghanistan, these, these are the first generation of Afghan women who get an education to inspire them to dream a better life, a life that they can learn about technology and be representative of their country anywhere in 21st centuries. Today, DCF has trained 10,000 of the women in Afghanistan. We have invested 20 to $30 to each of these girls to see that more than 100 of them grow into entrepreneurs themselves, taking their lives into their own hands and helping other women and girls lead a life of choice and never before that imagined. Some of them, they invented their own product, and some of them improved existing products. 68% of them Product import in Afghanistan. They are not produced locally. We are working to change this. There are endless possibilities. In 2017, Digital Sim Fund helped 100 women to start, to start their own startups in Afghanistan. And in 2018, we are going to showcase all of these projects in the biggest conference in technology, innovation, and entrepreneurship. For example, we have a 17 years old, Bas Baby. It's a proud co-founder, that they do the hand-making, and she is employing 25 people to work for her. She recently donated $4,000 to her schools to support technology. She is one of the shining examples. Today, half of the population in Afghanistan are teenagers. All we want is to make sure Afghanistan, in the eye of the next generation, in the next 20 years, is a country of a source of high-tech rather than a country of war and terror. Just imagine. Technology and education are the keys to unlocking global citizenship for the girls and women all around the world. Our vision is that to see their lives change one by one through the power of technology and education. The expanded worldview that knowledge can provide is the answer to many of the world's problems. Who knows what potential could be the mind of each of these young women. The answer to poverty, violence, and slavery could be in the mind and the heart of the girls and women who, who didn't have a way to realizing the power of their dream. The goal of this year is to unlock this potential of every young woman through the technology and education, and giving this woman a chance to take her rightful place in the society. 
Every day, we are one step closer to providing education and a door of opportunity to more girls. The computer lab and IT labs that we created in Afghanistan are a huge step, but only one of many. The DC will not stop until the global citizenship and equality is available through education and technology to every young woman, no matter where they live. The girls deserve the rights to imagine and pursue the life they want. It sounds so simple and so obvious, but it's far from reality in so many places. Millions of the girls left behind of the world move forward without them. Connectivity is absolutely necessary tools to putting in our changing place. They deserve a voice and the same right to technology and education as men that they were created. The change is huge, and many would fight against of the dream to empower the women across the world. It may seem a big problem, but solution is start right here in every day. It starts with one computer, one dream, one step at a time. We will change the world together. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks so much. Impressive. Thanks so Thank much. You. Questions? Any questions? Okay. Thanks so much. We have yes. something for you and for the girls. We would like to ask them to come, and yes, I think please. that uh, Fatima yes, also has a speech. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Come. Come. So, this for you. Thank Thanks you so much. So, the the girls were really uh, quite crazy about this, so we got it, and <laughs> they get it now. So, it's for you. Thank you. Thanks for you. Thanks so much. For you. Thanks so much. For you. Thanks so much. Welcome. For you. So, do you want one? <laughs> you want one? <laughs> okay. Roya, do you want one too? <laughs> yes, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, there is any uh, microphone that we can give to uh, Father? Yes. We have a. Microphone, small, yeah. Thanks so much. Fatima wants to share her story, that how she involved with the same and what Okay. Oh, okay. Hmm? Thanks so much. Do you need any help? Yeah. Yeah, they are coming. And 
سلام خدمت همه خانم ها و آقایانی که در اینجا حضور دارن این تنها سلام من نه بلکه سلام همه دختران افغانستان هست که به شما تقدیم می کنم This is honor for me. I am here and translating. <laughs> uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I would like to pass warm greeting of every single of Afghan girls to you. Afghanistan man kishbar ist ke aksar qishr zayif an ra zanan va kudakan tashkil midahand. Afghanistan is a country where women and children are farming the vulnerable part of the society. از حقوق خیش برخوردار نیستند. The part which is deprived uh, from its primary rights. برای درس خواندن با چالش های زیادی روبرو می شوند. The biggest matter in a girl's life in my country is studying. Uh, maybe studying is the easiest thing for most of you who are sitting here today. شاید برای شمایی که در اینجا حضور دارین درس خواندن خیلی کوچک و ناچیز شمرده شود اما بدانید تحصیل از جمله بزرگترین آرزوهای کودکان کشورم هست. But you should know that it is the biggest dream of a child in my country a dream which most of the times does not come true. بعضی وقتها در زندگی همه ما انسان ها موضوعات بسیار پیش پا افتاده ای رخ می دهد که باعث تغییر و دگرگونی در زندگی ما می شود و حتی می تواند مسیر زندگی ما را تغییر دهد. Sometimes it happens very simple things that totally change our life. When I was وقتی شش سالم بود کارتونی را دیدم که بزرگترین سوال زندگی هم شد. او کارتونی ربات ها بود برایم بسیار جالب بود که یک ربات چگونه می تواند راه برود و یا حرف بزند. When I was six years old, I watched a cartoon that later became the biggest question of my life. It was the robot cartoon. It was very interesting for me how a big piece of metal can move and talk. هیچ کس نتوانست به سوالم پاسخ دهد تا اینکه 14 سالم شد و به تیم رباتیک پیوستم. No one could answer my question till I have joined the robotic team. قرار شد در اولین مسابقات جهانی فرست گلوبال شرکت کنیم اما قبل از آن باید ویزای رفتن به آنجا را دریافت می کردیم. We were supposed to participate in the first global worldwide competition but first of all I, we needed visa to get it. ولی متاسفانه برایمان ویزا داده نشد و از دادن آن و از گرفتن ویزا ناکام ماندیم. Unfortunately, they have not issued our visa. Tough other groups from 60, 161 countries could participate in this competition. بسیار ناراحت بودیم که چرا ما را با همه زحماتمان نادیده گرفتند. I was really sad and tough why all this energy and effort was invested in this uh, in the project means nothing for them. در حالی که 161 کشور جهان در آنجا حضور داشتند. حس شخصی را داشتیم که همه کوه اورست را طی کرده است اما وقتی به قله می رسد اجازه فتح کردن برای آن نمی دهند. It was feeling of a climber who climbs Everest but is not allowed to stand on the peak. ولی باز هم ربات‌مان را ساختیم تا نمایندگی افغانستان را در میان 161 کشور جهان کند. We imagined that it would be a great chance to show our talent to the world and be a role model for Afghan women. وقتی برایمان گفتن ویزایتان را دادن اول باورمان نمیشد و فکر می کردیم همراهمان شوخی می کنند. اما وقتی از دادن ویزا اطمینان حاصل کردیم از هیجان زیاد نمی دانستیم چه کاری باید انجام دهیم. Destiny has done its part and they did issue our visa. When we heard that the visa are issued, it was not believable. We thought it was a ridiculous joke. سر انجام با مدال شجاعت از آن سوی مرسا به کشور خود بازگشتیم. Finally we get the visa we get the uh, medal and come back to the Afghanistan. 
این اتفاق باعث تغییر ذهنیت مردم و رهبران کشور هم شد. باعث شد تا آن تلسم یخی زاب شود و حداقل یک فیصد هم که شده از محدودیت های زنان در افغانستان کاسته شود. IT is something totally new in Afghanistan. It's like a bad. تکنولوژی در افغانستان مانند قنچه است که هنوز شکفته نشده است و بعض آن را من و دوستانم در افغانستان کاشتیم. IT is something like totally new in Afghanistan. It's like a bad that has not opened yet. I and my friends planted. The seed and water it to change to a bad. ما میخوایم این قنچه را رشد دهیم. برای رشد آن نیاز به اکسیژن، آفتاب و آب داریم. اکسیژن آن را از طریق کمک و همکاری یکدیگر، آفتاب آن را از طریق ایده و خلاقیت به دست میآوریم. We want to grow this bad app, but we need water, sun, and oxygen. Oxygen can be provided by collaboration of One to another, the idea and creativity will provide the sunshine. اما برای آب آن نیاز داریم تا دیگران برای ما راحل نشان دهند و آن را منطبق سازند. But it is just the motivation of other that makes us water this bad. خوشحالم از اینکه بالاخره توانستم پاسخ بزرگترین سوال زندگیم را دریافت کنم. At the end, I would like to wish that this small bat changed to a big tree in my country one day. And I take my answer a question. پدرم بزرگترین مشوق زندگیم بود که همیشه از من حمایت می کرد و و تلاش های پدرم باعث شد تا امروز من در اینجا حضور داشته باشم. My parents support me and. Because they support me, I'm in here. ولی او امروز در کنارم نیست. دشمنان افغانستان باعث شدند تا امروز او دیگر در کنارم نباشد. Just I repeat the sentence completed. Today, what I am and where I am is. All because of my father. He had a very effective role in my life. He had always supported me when I came back from USA. He hugged me and said, you brought pride to our country and people. I am really proud of you. Today, I don't have him anymore. A week. I'm happy that in the last few years, I am Today I don't have uh, him anymore. A week later, ISIS took my father from me, the man who was everything in my life. He stood against all traditional restriction and let me stand here today. But I am very happy that I could make him proud on his last day. My father is with me everywhere. اما من میگویم پدرم همیشه در کنارم هست. من را میبیند و از, از من حمایت می کند تا به راه خودم با تلاش بیشتری ادامه بدم. My father is with me everywhere I can see him. He motivates me to seriously continue my way every day. این را از خیره شدن به عکس پدرم دریافت. When I look at his photo, the smile on his face shows that he still supports me. امیدوارم روزی برسد که قنچه تکنولوژی در افغانستان تبدیل به درختی که سال گردد و اطفال وطنم به جای لنگ کفش در دستشان برای واکس زدن کتاب و در عوض دقدقه جنگ دقدقه و استرس امتحانات مکتب را داشته باشد. At the end, I would like to wish that this small bad change to a big tree in my country one day. I wish the children in my country take a book in their hand. Instead of polishing shoes, I wish one day these children get worried about their schools instead of war and hunger.
Thank you. So, thanks so much. Ah. Ah. I have no words. Uh, does any one of you have a question? Please. Ah. So, um, if we wanted to continue to support, what what can we do to um, help support the continuation of, um, you know, what you're doing? So. Uh, thank you for the questions. Um, I didn't have any kind of support. This could be in terms of the funding, helping us with mentoring of these girls. It could be providing the material. We are appreciated that. Thank you. So now we have a job. <laughs> As I mentioned in my uh, speech, we are going to build the first school of science, technology, engineering, maths, and innovation in Afghanistan. And we believe that centers would build to helping us to building the next generation of the young leaders in science and technology. And we wanted to see really that in next 20 years, Afghanistan be a country of the source of high tech rather than the terror and war. And these girls are the example of them. They are the, the people that they ch started the movement in Afghanistan that has changed not only the minds of our leaders in politics, but also has changed the people's minds that the woman's ability in science and technology and as well youth development through technology. I would like to let that um, Donia and Sahar also uh, give some speech, uh, a short sentence, because they are coming from very um, uh, close mind province, Nimruz, from south of Afghanistan. And they can tell you that what's happening when they saw these girls becoming as a robotic team in the TV and how their families changed their view and how they joined to the, to the, to the team. I, من از ولایت نیمروز هستم. ولایتی که نامش به فراش موشی سپرده شده. اما من میخواهم بگویم من وجود دارم. I am from Nimruz, a province that has been totally forgotten. I want to show the world that there are women living there. از وقت شناختن خودم استعداد این رشته را در خودم یافتم. اما خانواده هم قبل از اینکه تیم رباتیک در شبکه های اجتماعی ببینن مخالف بودن. I was always interested in robotic and technology, but my family has always prevented me from joining any team or studying groups. اما بعد از دیدن موفقیت تیم رباتیک و دیدن توانایی دختران در افغانستان when they first saw the robotic team on TV and heard about their success, they tried to pursue me to follow my goal. I am one of uh, I am one example of thousand restricted family in Nimruz. Thank you. Hi. I am also the province from the province that has been totally forgotten. Uh, the people were against and technology and knowledge, but today uh, they asked me to try and um, bring something change to be a res representative to my branch. Thank you. Hi. We are the young team leaders, and we are going to uh, make the better future for Afghanistan. Hi. I am the future of AI in Afghanistan. And I will make a bright future for me and Afghan girls. Thank you, everyone. Thank you very much. Thank you, kids, for bringing us here. Thank you, Jose, for every, your all support that to bring my team here. Thank you very much. <laughs>